Shall we rise up? Let's close our eyes in prayer. There's nothing God can't do. With God all things are possible. Our Father, we bless your name. We know that you are a great God. You are proving that with you, all things are simple. You can heal the sick. You can remove pains. And Father, we are trusting you tonight that you will magnify yourself in Jesus' name. We pray that in a simple way, we will receive our miracles tonight in Jesus' name. Lead us to the fountain of living waters. We pray that the thirst and the hunger we have will be satisfied by you. Glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Please let's be seated. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 10, I want to show you how faith works. And I want to point your attention to three particular cases on how faith works. You see, many times we are confused because we do not understand faith. And we feel that whenever we are prayed, if we are confused as to the working of faith, then it becomes difficult to receive the answer. But in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 10, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, begging him, and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Understand that this man was well. But he had a servant that was sick. But he did not carry the servant to Jesus Christ. He came without the servant. And he reported to Jesus Christ saying, my servant lies at home sick and grievously tormented. Now you wonder, you may ask the man, aren't you foolish? That your servant is sick. You want healing for your child. Why don't you carry the child to the Lord Jesus Christ so that the Lord can touch that child? Well, he said, no, I'm not foolish at all. Because, you see, I understand that many things travel through the air. Now, for example, you are far away from me. But my voice from here can travel to you. And your ears can catch what I'm saying. And you know sometimes that you go to phone. While you're on the phone, you are talking. The person receiving the message, receiving what you are saying, is not seeing you. It's far away. And yet, your voice can travel through the space because of the telephone connection and get to the other person. So the man said, I'm not foolish at all. I've come to Jesus Christ. Faith can make the healing to travel from Jesus to my servant that is sick at home. That's the first lesson to learn on how faith works. The preacher doesn't have to touch you. The preacher doesn't have to hold you. The preacher doesn't necessarily have to lay hands upon you. Faith can make the healing virtue to go from this place to where you are. Then too, your child may be at home sick. And you are only here. Now you realize that when you go to the market to get something for your child, your child is at home. But then you go to the market, you buy this thing, you can bring it back to the child. You know, it's the same way, the same transaction. You come to the Lord, and the child is at home, and you can take the healing back to the child at home. You say, well, when we go to market, we take a basket or a bucket. Or we take an envelope, if it's something small, we put it in the envelope and bring to the child. Yes, that's exactly what we're saying. Your faith 
is the bucket or the basket or the envelope. You collect the healing in the face, in the envelope, and then you send it back to the child at home. That's exactly what this man did. He came to Jesus and the sick person was at home. Verse 6, saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Verse 7, Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. Well, Jesus talked to the man. He said, okay, where's your house? Let's go there. I'll go and pray for him. And this man was understanding the method of faith, the way of faith. Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Understand this, distance is no barrier to faith. Just like the space between me and you, it's no barrier for your hearing what I'm saying. Ocean, seas, houses are no barrier to faith. Just like on the telephone. You may be phoning or ringing another man far away. And the oceans divide you. And the houses divide you. But then, your voice is able to get to the other man. God has so worked it that faith can travel anywhere. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, without opening the door, Jesus Christ will enter the house after his resurrection. That's a lesson to us. The faith of the Son of God will enter closed doors without opening the door. And when we pray, when we call on the name of Jesus, the power of the name of Jesus will get to any sick body. In the hospital, in the house, no matter where that person may be. So the centurion says, speak the word only. My servant shall be healed. And then the man gave an illustration in verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goes. Now you realize how easy it is for you to give a command to people under your authority? We have many things under authority. Now, if you have a child at home, that child is under your authority. And you tell the child, stand up, he stands up. You have a servant under your authority. You tell the servant, go this way, and he goes that way. And the centurion told Jesus, I think as I control my servants and my children, that's how you control sickness and disease. Now, some of you have dogs at home. That dog is under your authority. And you tell the dog, get away. And the dog gets away. That's what we call authority. You see, the name of Jesus has authority. And uh, like you act or talk or command your dog to get away and it gets away, it's the same authority the name of Jesus has on sickness and disease and devils. And when in the name of Jesus we command and we say sickness go, it goes. When we say health or healing come, it comes. And so the man said, I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. You know why Jesus marveled? Why he was surprised? He was surprised that the Pharisees who read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, never understood faith. They never understood the word of command. They never understood the authority of God over diseases and devils and problems. But he was surprised that this centurion, a Gentile, could understand very easily how faith works. And you know, Jesus is still surprised and marveled today. Now you've heard testimonies of those who come for the first time on Thursday. They've never been in a meeting like this. The clapping is strange to them. The singing is strange to them. The praying is strange to them. 
and the multitude of people here is almost terrifying to them. But then, they just easily they get readjusted. They sing, we sing, they sing. We clap, they clap. We pray, they pray. We say amen, they learn how to say it immediately. How some people can adjust very quickly. And then we say, if you have any problem, raise up your hand. It is going now. They just believe immediately it is going. And they have never, they have not read too many parts of the Bible. They have not gone to many, many churches. Or some places they have gone, they have received no help. And the moment we say, now watch it, immediately the preacher goes, the preacher says, your sickness is going, it will go. And this newcomer will say, yes, it will go. And there is an agreement of faith. And immediately we pray that newcomer receives the miracle. And so Jesus is surprised that somebody can come four times, ten times, and not receive. When those who come just for one time will understand how faith works. So when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Those people have read Bible until they just read and read and read. They've been to synagogue. They never missed it. They've been to meetings. They've been to, you know, those meet meetings the Jews used to have in Jerusalem at the time of the Pentecost and at other times. And yet, they didn't understand faith. And this stranger came once and understood. Now look at verse 13. And Jesus said... So the centurion, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, be it done unto thee. That short prayer. You know why some people don't easily get healed? Now they have a big, big problem. Great problem. They've gone to herbalists, they've gone to hospitals, they've gone to so many places. And then they come for prayer. And they expect that, you know, the person to pray will be dressed up by the tailor first. You know, the tailor will be kind enough to give him a flowing white garment, have a cap on his head. And the Bible says, uh, when we're before God, a man shall not wear a cap. But these people get ideas that if you are going to pray, we must disobey God and wear a cap. And hold a rod. And then have a bell. And have a bottle, have some palm fronds, and then as you, you know, as you are moving, the garment is flowing. Then the person will say, I heard this man can pray. Because his garment is flowing, his cap is long, and the bell, this is something. But you see, Jesus didn't do it that way. In fact, the prayer was too short. Jesus just said, Go your way. As you have believed, be it done unto you. Your servant is well. If you were prayed for like that, will you not go back and say, I thought that man was going to pray for me. But you know, I just got there and he just said, go your way. Your servant is sealed. That great problem that I brought. But you see, the man believed because he knew how faith works. The shorter the prayer, the more powerful it is. It is not the length of the prayer. It is the name in the prayer. It is not the length of the prayer. It is the power behind the prayer. It is not the length of prayer. It is the faith within the prayer. It is not the length of prayer. It is the connection. The person praying us with heaven that counts. You know, if you have connection with heaven, it doesn't take a long time. If you don't have any money in the bank and you go there, you may spend five hours talking to the cashier, you'll bring nothing out. But you know, if you have something in the bank, you can go there and spend five minutes and just write a check and sign your name in five minutes. When you come out, you bring all the money you need. And you see, we have an account in heaven. And whenever we send in that check in the name of Jesus, we don't have to spend one hour, three hours, or even one day. We catch whatever we want from heaven. And so we have the name of Jesus, the word of promise, the spirit of God, the blood of Jesus. And you know, as we're going to pray tonight, 
Even if the person we are praying for is not here and you are only representing the person, the person is going to get well in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. From verse 24. There's another case. I've told you all the centurion of this man had his servant healed. Now Mark chapter 7 verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into an house and would have no man know it, but he could not be healed. And a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him. Here in Mark we are studying about a woman. This woman understood the same thing the man understood. The first man we studied had a servant's sake at home. This one had a daughter. But she did not bring the daughter to Jesus Christ. You know, it's the same thing I've been telling you that this woman understood. That he doesn't have to touch you. He doesn't have to touch the person that is sick. You can collect the healing in the envelope of faith. The faith is the envelope. The faith is a carrier. The faith is a channel through which the healing will flow and get to the person that is sick. And these people understood that it is not the physical touch. It is not the physical presence. It is the faith. So the woman left the child at home. You know why she left the child at home? There will be so much struggle because this uh, child was being tormented of the devil. And for this woman to bring the child, it might take so much trouble bringing this child. So the woman just left the child at home, loved the child at home, and came to Jesus Christ with faith. And then talked to Jesus and said, in verse 26, the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Now, this demon possessed daughter was not right there with Jesus Christ. The woman knew something. Demon here. Anything that is said in the authoritative name of Jesus Christ. Satan hears anything that is said or commanded in the authoritative name of Jesus Christ. No, you know, he doesn't have to be here. You know, for example, take for example, you are being tormented by a witch or wizard. Or by somebody having evil spirit. And you are here. And the person of the evil spirit tormenting you is far, far away. Sometimes under the depths of the sea. Sometimes in the village. Sometimes very far away. But you know, distance is no barrier at all. When we stand up here and we pray, over there in the village where the evil spirit is operating, the evil spirit hears what we're saying in the name of Jesus and the evil spirit is gone. Or sometimes your child is in the hospital and you are not able to withdraw that child. But you come on your own and you come with faith and here we pray and the healing will go right to the hospital bed because God knows where your child is or in the psychiatric home, and become delivered immediately. And it's going to be like that tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse 26, he talked to Jesus Christ. Now, there is a trick here. There's something here, you, if you are not clever, you'll miss it. You know, sometimes Jesus wants to know how serious you are. And you take that to mean maybe he doesn't want to do it. Oh, he wants to do it so much. But Jesus has a way of testing you to know whether you really mean what you are saying. In verse 27, but Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled. 
For it is not meat, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. You know, Jesus wanted to see her reaction. And you know that women, especially women like this, who have faced trouble at home, women who have had demons and devils tormenting their children at home, and you know, their husbands might have forsaken them, and the mother-in-law is pulling trouble, and the house is hot. And now came to Jesus Christ to say, Now, Jesus, help me. Everybody has forsaken me. And yet Jesus is going to see how serious this woman is. So Jesus said, no, no, I'm not going to help you. I was looking at her face to see her reaction. Because what you're asking for belongs to children, and I need to tell you, you are not a child of God. And Jesus paused to see her reaction, whether she would get angry or not. There's one place you don't get angry. You don't get angry in church. Am I right? When you come before God, you don't get angry. You see, God can tell you things that nobody else can tell you. God can tell you that, well, you're asking for what belongs to children. After all, you are a dog, prostitute, fornicator, adulterer. Now, when God says that, you think, oh, God is not going to help me. Because, you see, he's already calling me a prostitute, a dog, and a fornicator. So let me go home. Stay. He's just testing you. The only thing is that, you know, when the electricians, when they are testing, they say, testing, testing, testing. But when God is testing you, he doesn't say, now, woman, stay, like the doctors will do, and they have this injection in their hand, and he'll say, now, it's not going to hurt you. We're just going to test whether your blood is all right or not. Testing, testing, testing. And then they say something. But, you know, God doesn't say it like that. God just puts it on you like it is. And he says, you are a dog. If you get angry and go away, you get angry and then you meet the child at home, the demon is still waging war with you at home. If you are wise, if God says you are a dog, you say yes, sir. If he says you are an adulterer, you say yes, sir, you are right. If he says, well, you fight more than lion, you say you are right. If he says you are a sinner and you will not be able to get anything from me because you are a sinner, you say you are right. Look at the woman. This woman will, this woman passes any other woman I have seen. Others will get angry. But let's see. In verse 28, she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. You are a dog? Yes, Lord. You are a prostitute. Yes, Lord. You are an adulterer. Yes, Lord. You are a sinner. A big sinner. Yes, Lord. If you can talk like that, you'll get something from God. If God says you are a sinner, you just say, yes, Lord. You cannot save yourself. Oh, yes, Lord. You've been wasting your money and wasting your time in Harbadi's houses. Yes, Lord. You don't get angry. In church, you don't get angry with God. You just anything God says, you say, oh, "Yes, I'm the one that is wrong." And if you have that attitude, your healing will come, your blessing will come. But now the woman said, "Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs." And he said unto her, "For this saying, go thy way." Look at the prayer again. Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. And the daughter is not there. The daughter is far back at home. And Jesus said, woman, all that I'm saying now, the devil can hear. And I'm commanding the devil now to get out of your daughter. And in verse 30, when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out and her daughter laid Upon the bed. Can you see that? Look at John. We're looking at how faith works. It's simpler than many people understand. John chapter 4. From verse 46. I've shown you a man that came on behalf of his servant. I've shown you a woman that came on behalf of her daughter. Now let me show you somebody that came on behalf of the son. Son, daughter, servant. 
And those are all the categories of people you have. The person is either a son or a daughter. If it's not either of those, then it's a servant. In John chapter 4, verse 46, So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee. He went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die, before my child dies. Jesus says unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. I don't think your prayer can be shorter than that. Go thy way, thy son liveth. One sentence. Six words. The devil doesn't need more than that. Demons don't need more than that before they are cast out. Sicknesses, infirmities do not need more than that before they are cast out. A single sentence and the sickness is gone. The pain is gone. The trouble is gone. Go thy way. Go thy way. Thy son, leave it. Now let me tell you one secret. You know, when Jesus said, go thy way, thy son leave it. The son was not there. So this man could not see by feeling whether the thing was true or not. Because God doesn't speak to your feeling, he talks to your faith. He didn't feel any warmer or colder. He didn't feel anything, whatever. Not by feeling, but by faith. And surely, when Jesus spoke those words... The power went into action immediately. Now, if you have taken medicine before, I'm, I'm sure you've taken medicine since you were born. Am I right? Yes. You know, sometimes uh, in the past when you took medicine, you were sick. And you were given the pills and you swallowed them. Now, you may not feel anything at that time. Immediately. But the pill is already working. And it's the same thing here. When the man heard that, that's God's pill. We call it gospel. And when he swallowed the God's pill, the gospel, the word that was given to him, it started working immediately. He might not feel it or sense it or see it. And yet... When Jesus said, go thy way, thy son leaveth, the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. You know, you come on Thursday, and we pray. And after the prayer, you go your way. And then you discover Friday. You just wake up to see that the sickness are totally gone. If it happened to you like that, can you raise up your hand? You got the prayer on Thursday, but it was now, when it was Friday, you just saw that the pain was gone. Can you raise up your hand and let me see? Amen. God bless you. You know, it's the same thing today. That the word is said. Now, if you go to your body and say, now body, am I healed? Your body may not tell you the right thing. But if you understand you have taken the peel of God, God's peel, gospel. The word of God. And it says, go your way. Your son liveth. Go your way. Your body is sealed. Go your way. The sickness is gone. Go your way. Everything is all right. If you take it and you believe it, it's actually so. And so in verse 51, as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, thy son liveth. Those who were at home, they were searching for him. They said, your son is now all right. Then he inquired of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. The fever left him. Some people say fever is a small thing. They don't need to come to Bagada because of fever. Fever is a small thing. They don't need to pray. 
But you realize what was said in verse 47. For he was at the point of death. It was just fever, but then he was at the point of death. And he told him yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. They were converted as a result of the miracle. This is how faith works. You remember there was a time ten lepers came to Jesus Christ and they were asking him to cleanse them, to remove the leprosy. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. Your leprosy will be off. They were going on the way. While they were going, the leprosy departed and one came back to give glory to God. And I believe as you understand how faith works even today, if you have a child that is sick at home, you can... Pray for the child there and the child will be well by the time you get home. If you have a mother that is sick at home, we can pray here and by the time we get home, the mother can be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are sick yourself, uh, you have come. If those who have not come have got the healing because of somebody that came, how much more those who have come? I just believe that tonight the simplicity of faith will work in Jesus' name. Amen. We have the name of Jesus, we have the blood of Jesus, we have the word of Jesus, we have the promise of Jesus, we have the mind of Christ, we have everything that we have been given. The atonement on Calvary is still working today, and by his stripes we are healed. Let's stand up and take the healing. We'll bow our heads and close our eyes. Now you talk to God. Jesus is here. The Lord is here. Whatever your problem may be, just talk to your God yourself. In a simple way. The way you know how to talk. Just tell him very simply. Lord, this is my problem. If it's concerning your servant or your daughter or your son, tell the Lord. You want healing for yourself. Deliverance for yourself. Tell him why you are here. Tell him what you want him to do for you. And he's going to do it just now. As we are telling the Lord, believe that he is answering just now, right now. Believe him. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you have any demon attack, especially at night, that you are not able to sleep and you have nightmares and you want the Lord to deliver you, right now, can you just raise up your hand and we'll pray for you. You have demon attack and you have the problem at night that you cannot sleep. I'm believing that the whole thing will clear up as we pray tonight. Something always chasing you around in the night in your dream. That's causing you so great problem. Father in heaven, we thank you. We know that with you all things are possible. Miracles are still happening today. Healings are still happening today. And the devil is still being chased away. And Father, we know that when we stand in the name of Jesus, there is no evil power that can stand. And so I'm calling upon you on behalf of all these who are raising up their hands. Deliver them in Jesus' name. As the devil has been tormenting them in their dreams. I speak against the devil. And I command that he will remove his hands away from their lives in Jesus' name. I'm asking, O oh Lord, that all those nightmares and bad dreams, everything will vanish away. And this will be totally free in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You have any problem in the head, can you raise up your hand and we'll pray for you. Our Father, we thank you. We know that you are the living one. I'm asking that whatever problems are represented, that these people are raising up their hands. These problems will go away right now. Amen. And I command that everything in their head, 
will become normal from this very time in Jesus name Amen. but I'm asking that you deliver them from all the powers of darkness Amen. destroy all the powers of evil Amen. set them completely free Amen. in Jesus name we pray Amen. whatever other problem you have sickness or with your body, with your family, whatever it is, you can raise up your hand and lay your hand on that place. Remember that even though the preacher is not there to touch you, your healing is right there. And it will flow into your body. And you will get healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we come before you right now. And Lord, I'm asking that the healing virtue from the blood of Jesus Christ will flow into everyone raising up his hand or a hand right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, whatever pain may be in the bodies of these people, I'm asking, O oh Lord, that you heal them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You have said whatsoever we ask in the name of Jesus shall be granted. We are asking that for everyone raising up his hand right now. The healing they desire. The deliverance they desire. Will be theirs immediately now in Jesus name. Amen. Set everyone totally free. Amen. Magnify your holy name. Amen. Let the healing come upon their bodies right now. Amen. Perform the miracle right now. Oh Lord, I thank you because I know you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now if you have anybody that is sick at home, and you want us to pray for the person, anyone that is sick at home, a child, a maid, a house boy, a mother, somebody very important to you, anyone, Remember what I've read to you in the Bible today. The servant, the son, the daughter were not there. But these people came on behalf of the servant, on behalf of the son or the daughter. And prayer was made. And the child at home, the daughter at home, the son at home, the servant at home was healed. And so your mother at home can be healed as we pray here. Your maid at home can be healed as we pray here. The people at home that you are representing now can be healed as we pray here. Our Father, we are depending upon you. We we'll trust you right now. As these brothers and sisters, men and, men, men and women, are raising up their hands on behalf of somebody at home, Lord, I'm asking that the healing virtue from Jesus Christ, from Calvary, will get to those people at home right now and heal them in Jesus' name. Whatever the root cause of the sickness, the infirmity or the disease, I destroy it right now in Jesus' name. And I'm asking that you set every one of these people at home sick. I pray that you deliver them in Jesus' name. Set them totally free. Amen. Deliver them from the oppression of the devil. Amen. I praise your name because I know you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I still want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. Now you heard when it was said that we're still dealing with marriage issues in the messages on Sundays and this coming Sunday the time of search the scripture 7.30 to 8.30 for the first service 11 to 12 for the second service we'll be dealing with the questions you have sent in during the period of search the scripture 
And so, if you have written questions, be sure to be early, to be punctual. And even if you have not written any question, the questions you have on your mind could have been written by other people. So it's good to come early. And let's talk to other people who have marriage problems. As they come on Sunday, the Lord himself will solve the problems they are bringing. And right now I'm going to pray for those people that have marriage problems. You're married and you have a problem at home. That is really taking much energy out of you. You're very sad about it. It's a great problem. You count it as the greatest problem of your life. And you want us to pray for you right now. You can just raise up your hand as all eyes are closed and heads are bowed. You have a family problem. Marriage problem. And it bothers you so much. It's heavy on your heart. It's great on your mind. It looks like an impossible case to you. So just raise up your hand where you are. Let's handle this marriage problem for you tonight. And then you can come on Sunday to listen to the word of exhortation on how you can keep the permanent blessing on your marriage. As we're raising up your hand, do you believe God will answer? Do you believe that God is able to give you a miracle in your family? As we pray right now, trust the Lord. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. You are interested in all our problems. It's not your will that we'll continue to bear about our own burden. You can carry our burden for us. In fact, you have invited us to bring our burden to you. And these who are raising up their hands now are bringing their burdens to you in marriage, in the family, on the area of their children. And Lord, I'm asking that all the burdens represented as they raise up their hands, you lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the problem may be, there is nothing beyond your power. There is nothing beyond your love beyond your wisdom therefore in your mercy, in your love in your wisdom and in your power I am asking that these problems that are represented as the raising of their hands to remove them in Jesus name Amen. bring peace into families where there is no peace where they are on the verge of divorce I am asking that you bring unity and harmony into those homes in Jesus name Amen. Why it is poverty that is bringing the problem. Lack of finance. To be able to take care of the family. I'm asking, O oh Lord, that you will remove this poverty from those families in Jesus' name. Why it is the problem of misunderstanding between one another. Or with the in-laws that is causing the problem. You are the Lord that can bring peace into confusion. And I'm asking, O oh Lord, that you bring your peace into these homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Where evil powers have been sent to destroy homes, destroy marriages, destroy and take away happiness from these homes. I come against the powers of darkness. A new powers of darkness, I command you. Remove your hands away from these families in Jesus' name. What is the case of sickness in the family that is causing so much problem? And because of that, they are thinking of leaving one another. Oh Lord, you are the great physician. And Father, I am asking that your healing stream will flow into these families and the sick one that is suffering will be healed in Jesus name what's the case of immorality 
that some other women are trying to come into the family to break the family. Father, you are the God of holiness. You delight in purity. And Lord, I'm asking that all these who want to break homes of other people by introducing immorality into the homes, Lord, I'm asking you convict them of their sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Send them away from these homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Where there has been separation, Lord, I'm asking that in your own power, you reunite husband and wife who are separated. And as these wives or these husbands are looking up to you, expecting you to settle the quarrel, to reunite the man and the wife, do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, I just believe you have answered. I thank you because you have done it. Thank you because of your power and because of the miracle that you have manifested tonight. We praise on him for all that you have done even this very night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.